Hey, and welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do this in Blender. I'm using Blender 3.6 on a MacBook Pro, M1 chip, and 16 RAM. So first we're doing the glass model. So press Shift plus A to add a cylinder. Press on your Tab button to go to Edit Mode. So this is the Tab button, just right over the Caps Lock. And select Faces, this thing over here. And select the top circle and press X to delete and then Face. Do the same thing with the down face. Select it, press X to delete and delete face. Switch to edge, this thing over here. Then select this edge and press Alt or Option to select the whole edge. And press S plus zero nine to scale it down. Then press E plus S to extrude. And go to face over here, then select grid fill. Then change the offset to four. Then select the top edge. Press E plus S to extrude. Press Z to switch between the shading modes and select wireframe mode. Then press E plus Z to extrude down on the Z axis. Press S plus 0, 9 to scale it down. Then press E plus S to extrude and the use the grid fill for this too. Press Command plus R to add an edge loop. Press G plus Z to move it on the Z axis. The press CMD plus R to add another loop edge and press G plus Z to move it on the Z axis. And make the same thing for the inside edge. Now go back to the object mode by hit the tab button. The right click and shade smooth. Go to the modifier and add subdivision surface, and change the viewport to 2. Now let's make a material for it, so go to the shadings. So I'm going to show you two shadings for glass materials. So we start with the clear glass. So click New and select the principled BSDF and press X to delete it. Press Shift plus A to add a mix shader, then add a Fresnel node, add a refraction BSDF, and then add a glossy BSDF. Add two value nodes. Let's plug all these nodes together. Start with the Fresnel, plug the FAC to fan on the mix shader, then plug the first value to the IOR, and change the value to 1.520. Also plug the value to the IOR on the refraction. Select the refraction, and plug BSDF to the mix shader and the first shader. Then plug the glossy BSDF to the other shader on mix shader. Plug the second value to roughness on glossy and the refraction. Last, plug the shader to surface, and here you have your clear glass shading. Now let's make the second material, the frost glass. Click on this button so you can copy your material and make some changes. So start with change the second value number to 0 0.250, and here you have frost glass. Go back to viewport and then press H to hide your glass. So let's doing the fluid simulation. Now we are doing the flow. So start with press shift plus A to add a UV sphere. Press G plus Z to move it on the Z axis. Now we doing the domain. So start with adding a cube by pressing shit plus A. Go to edit mode by hitting the tab button. Press G plus Z plus control to move it on the Z axis, and so it snaps to the surface. Now go back to object mode by hitting the tab button. Press S plus 5 to scale it by 5, and then press S plus Z plus 2 to scale it on the Z axis by 2. Now go back to your flow settings. Now select your UV sphere and go to physics. Click on Fluid, change the type to Flow, and the Flow type to Liquid, and change to Inflow. Now go back to the Domain settings. Select the cube, click on Fluid, change the type to Domain, and the Domain type to Liquid. Now press Alt or Option plus H to unhide everything. In this video means unhide the glass. You can see the glass is very tiny, so press S plus 4 to scale it by 4, and then press Ctrl plus A to apply the scale. So select the glass. Go to Physics. Click on Fluid. Change the type to Effector. And don't forget to check the Is Planar, so the fluid don't fall through. Go back to the Domain Settings. Scroll down to Cache and change the type to Modular so you can bake each thing separate and if Blender crash or you want to cancel your baking. And don't forget to check the Resumable. Now scroll up to the Settings and change the resolution to 128. For better results, make the number higher. The results video have 250 in resolution. But for this video, I'm doing 128. Scroll down to Liquid and change the narrow band width to 8, and change the randomness to 8 as well. Now let's animate the flow. So to do that, you select the flow. Press G plus X to move it on the X axis, then press N to show the sidebar, and right click on the X axis and make a single keyframe on frame 1. Then go to frame 25 and press G plus X and move it to the right and make a single keyframe for that too. Then go to frame 50 and press G plus X and move it to the left and make a keyframe as well. Then go to frame 75 and press G plus X and move it to the right. Make a keyframe as well. Go back to the domain settings. Don't forget to scroll down to your cache. 
and change the end to 75. And the end frame to 75 as well. Go to the flow physics and check the initial velocity and change the X to 2. Go back to the domain settings and then hit bake. And wait for the baking to bake. Okay, like you see, I don't like the length of the video. It's going to fast. So this is a very good example for the modular settings we have done before. Scroll down to cache. Change the end number to 100. And change the end frame to 100 as well. Scroll backups and click on resume. That means you don't to back all from frame 1. We start baking from frame 75. Now we have something I like more. Scroll down and check the mesh. Change the upress factor to 4 and change the particle radius to 1.5. And then hit the bake button. And wait for the baking to bake. So I just want to say I change the end frame to 140. Now we've some water. Then right click and shade it smooth. Go to the modifier and add a smooth modifier. And change the repeat to 5. Let's make a material for it. So go to shading, click on new. Make the color full white. Change the roughness to 0 and change the transmission to 1. Then change the IOR to 1.33. Select the water and go to object and scroll down to shading and, and check the cast shadow caustics. And now you have a water material. So I'll show you my render settings. So I render in cycles and GPU. Check the denoise and the noise threshold. Also change it to 0.1 so you can render faster. My max samples I use is 300. I also like to use motion blur, so check that if you want. Then go to the output. Change the file format to FMPEG video. The encoding to MPEG4. And last, go to the video. And the make the video codec to H264. Then go to render over here and click on render animation. And wait for your video to render. And here is my results. Thank you for watching, and I hope you like my tutorial. Comment down below what I can make in the next video and with the editing and all that thing. And feel free to subscribe for more tutorials and videos.